Well, if all else fails, try try again, right? So here I am. I've got some source code that I've made modifications to. Um, made my own specialized mod to Grand Theft Auto. Let me show you what it does first, and uh, that way I can turn off Dev Studio so I can look at Grand Theft Auto. And here's what what we do. So move my little debug panel, and right here you can see my face position. Watch my face. So hands free. If you can't see, based on my position, it's actually capturing my face. If I get closer, if I get further away, if I sit up, and if I draw back. Actually, did I do that correctly? Hold on, let me make sure that loading. Set this, but I don't think it was moving on the Z axis, so I just made a modification to it. So let's try this again. Sit up. Yeah, there we go. So this is inspired by Doctor Who. Um, an episode that had the Doctor along with Clara Oswald walking into the museum in London, and they ended up taking a look at this uh, three-dimensional painting that was created by the Time Lords. And I asked myself, how can I recreate this, this effect and everything? I thought it was pretty cool. So what I ended up doing was I ended up making a modification directly to Grand Theft Auto. So that game that you saw over there is Grand Theft Auto. And what I've done is I've leveraged scripthook.net to uh, to plug in and create my own script into it. Um, I've also got code in here that's brought in from computer vision, and it lets me capture um, capture images from the camera. Now I can't have two captures going on the same computer at the same time, and I just went through this entire dialogue, uh, not realizing that the other computer wasn't capturing. So I'm capturing on one computer um, the video that I'm actually going to post-process and overlay this with the uh, with the, the video itself. So you're going to see my face movements and everything that's going to be synchronized to the video. Um, now, if you actually saw this in real life, you'd realize that uh, my head is moving in coordination with the positional offsets and everything. And uh, all that is actually being tracked by the computer through computer vision. So how that's actually done is, uh, first off, I've got this capture here. Um, that capture is capturing right here at a lower resolution. I can capture up to 1920, um, it's basically 1080p. Um, I can capture up to, but I'm actually dividing that by five because you get to better frame rates like that. So I think it's getting 15 frames per second if that at the higher frame rate. So if I decrease that to this or even less, um, I get better frame rates, but I get lower resolution captures. So that's why you're seeing a little bit of a jitteriness. If I could actually increase that resolution, you'd definitely see something better, you know, from that perspective and everything. And um, with that, um, I'm, I'm actually setting capture properties right there. And then, if you look forward a little bit, you'll see, first off, uh, that was my first effort and first try to actually get the current to XYZ positional offsets and everything. And I was trying to actually uh, make it so where I was building a, a parallel line to stop some of the jitteriness, and that didn't work as, as well as I had hoped it would. But uh, really, here's where it actually starts uh, it starts um, working. So the is capturing camera that's actually toggled by the uh, F12 key, and uh, I'll show you where that gets toggled if it does. If you're a code prick like I am, so I look for the key code F12 and I toggle it and I tell it to initialize the camera if that's the case. And in here, um, what I'm doing is I'm capturing a frame that's actually coming from. Um, the current, uh, the capture right here, so there's a query frame that actually captures that frame. Um, from there, I'm, I'm taking that frame and I'm saying, is there any faces on this uh, frame that I'm actually looking at? Now, there can actually be multiple faces, but right now I'm only testing for one. Um, the reason for it is it's a whole lot easier to do triangulation for, uh, for certain faces position and everything if you just have one face to work with and you're not tossed back and forth between two, particularly if you're changing the angle of the perspective of the viewer and everything based on the on the positional offset. 
So with this, um, the first time I'm actually gathering the face rect, and actually for every subsequent time everything, and that's the rectangle of the face that's actually been detected through the camera. And the first time I pass through this, I'm actually saying, okay, I'm going through destroying all the cameras that are actually, this is Grand Theft Auto, mind you. So once this has been toggled, it automatically zooms to this fixed point that I actually travel to, um, leveraging this other utility I have. It's called FreeCam. Um, with that, I obtained the XYZ positional offset for both the um, thing I was looking at, which is right here, the look at point, that's the Hollywood sign, and it's basically front and center right in the Hollywood sign, and then the position I want to look at it from. And uh, if you can't see, you know, the, I can, I've been playing with the Z a little bit to actually get a better angles and everything at it. And uh, I just tell the camera, hey, point at that position and everything, and then preserve, you know, that initial X, Y, Z position that I'm actually looking at. Um, you know, that, uh, it, you know, with this is considered front and center, the center point of where I'm actually starting from. Now, from there, what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, you know, we have the start rack position. That's the initial position that's acquired right here. For the first time, this actually captures the face. And, you know, so when I hit F12 and I toggle F12, boom, it'll capture the XY um, offset for that. And it'll actually, it'll say to me, um, at this point, this is the starting left position. And then from there, any deviance is left or right is going to end up with a number that's going to be negative or positive based on this equation and everything. And because of the fact that I'm I'm trying to actually emphasize the movements and everything, I'm scaling that by a factor of 10. You know, because I really want to see the head tracking and when I move side to side, you know, I want to make sure that it's it's pretty profound, at least now in the test stages and everything. So with that, um, the other thing I'm doing is just basically maintaining a, uh, a Z position that's based on the top of the rectangle. So there's a problem with this, you know, with the uh, with the Z. If I actually move closer, the rectangle is going to get bigger, and all of that. But the top of the rectangle is going to be moving closer to you know to the uh, or to the top, and uh, that presents a little bit of a problem. If my Z doesn't change, my head maintains the same level it'll still make it so where the box gets bigger. So I've got a little bit of a calculation problem to figure out based on that perspective and everything. And then I have the, uh, then I set the, um, you know, so that's neither here nor there. I just, this is a proof of concept to basically make sure I can actually track the position on a dynamic basis, um, make modifications to Grand Theft Auto through the script hook and uh, based on tracking information coming from the camera. And then from there, um, I can actually I set the camera's position, uh, which basically it's going to be offset. Uh, so it's going to start with the incur x x y z, which is the position that's captured, which is front and center, and then offset it a positive or negative amount based on the current x y position. So current x y position will either move this way or this way, and uh, or this way and this way. And at that point, I'm just making calculations based on. For the Y, um, the width, and uh, why I'm doing that. Really, the one that does matter the most at this point is definitely the X position. I've got some stuff to figure out with the Y and the Z, but the X position is the most critical here. Um, I could really do without the Y and the Z right now. But um, yeah, so this will actually move the current location that. I'm looking at from the camera perspective, it'll move it this way. And, you know, of course, this way too, based on, you know, my being close and everything to it. And at this point, I can point at from there. So let's say I only move on the x-axis. I'm going to get a problem here because of uh, Mr. Pythagorean here. So if I actually make that modification, I go back to OBS, I turn off that, come back in here, I reload it. Now at this point, I'm going to reset it. Now you're only going to see X positional changes. So if you see me get closer, it's not going to show me getting closer. It's not going to show me getting further. But you will see the, the positional changes here. So I'm going to go through and uh, the one point right here. I'll show you real quick. Going back here, the emphasis. So this is, I'm going to change this to 5.0. So I'm going to diminish the, the amount that it's actually scaling the movement and everything to make this so where the movement isn't as strong. So I'm going to have that come back in here to 
Play.str, reload it in Grand Theft Auto. And make sure we're debug panel. Face cam on, there we go. And same thing. So as you can see I'm not moving as much. And it's definitely a little bit smoother that way. So five seems like it's a good amount. But um, what I've noticed is there's a couple things. Um, I definitely need some kind of way to determine depth. And uh, probably going to have to figure out some calculations and everything to figure out variance from an offset position every day. Um, and depth is a little bit trickier to, you know, for me to understand than, uh, than I thought it would be and everything. And um, the other thing I'm going to have to figure out is uh, how to handle the z-axis. And, you know, what I love the idea is recreating that painting that Dr. Who has. So if you haven't seen that episode, um, just look up 3D painting um, in Doctor Who in the London uh, London, London Museum. And um, just see the effect that that thing has. And that's more or less what I'm trying to create. Now, the goal here is smooth. And this right here is butch as fuck, if you can't say it. You know, it looks cool. You know, but it's still lacking. You know, just because I, I'm trying to figure out you know, how to actually make it consistent. Now, one thing I can certainly do is turn off the heads up display. So, we'll come in here, settings, uh, display, where's my head? Turn it off. And turn off radar. And let's say, So I've not, I have no HUD at this point. It looks a little bit, a little bit better without the HUD, right? But can you imagine this being big screen? That's actually what I'm imagining. Big screen. And you look at it, this walk by it, and it's moving like this. It's smooth though. Yeah, all lot smoother than this. So one other thing I thought about doing is actually making it a separate process that actually reads the frame in from the camera, um, putting a memory map file and letting this thing read that memory map file and just look for changes and everything on a real-time basis. That way I can do the capture and I can do it any resolution I want to. Um, hopefully it doesn't uh, screw with the process as much as this does with the brand new file. Um, I still suspect there will be a heck up and everything, but maybe not as much. And then from there, you know, maybe I could have a little bit of better resolution on the camera. And also, I've, I've got some work with mathematics to do and everything, too. My brain's getting fuzzy with some of this stuff and everything. So, anyways, I just wanted to share. So, next up, editing and splicing this together. Yay! Thank you for listening and watching.